Hey everyone, Life Without Pants here, and uh, back with another Path of Exile video. So, uh, today we're going to talk about what is an uh, optimal uh, betrayal board setup look like. You want to get maximum amounts of scarabs, you want to you know, run a couple of safe houses continually and very, very fast and rapidly. Um, and this is, what it, uh, this is what it looks like to me. So here you can see... Uh, the objective for me here is that I want to be running, uh, I want to get as many scarabs as possible through the intervention mechanic, uh, through the intervention house. I want to get uh, lots of white sockets with Verici, and I want to upgrade a lot of breach zones with it that fled. So, you know, research and intervention are the two uh, safe houses I need to be running a lot of. So you can see here on my board, I've only got two people in each. Uh, Elrion and Gravitius because they are giving me uh, Divination Card Scarabs and Unique Scarabs and uh, Idlefled and Verici in uh, Research, which is a pretty standard combo. Uh, so when they're level 3, Elrion gives you uh, level 3 or Gilded Scarabs uh, as guaranteed. Uh, if he's at level 2, he'll give Polished Scarabs as guaranteed. And if he's level 1, he'll give a uh, guaranteed Rusted Scarab. And the same for Gravitius, or anybody in Intervention for that matter. Uh, if you get them at level 3, they will give the Guaranteed Gilded, but they will also have a possibility to hit Polished and uh, Rusted as well. So you can walk away with 6 Scarabs from running just one of these safe houses. And this amount of intelligence that I got here, this is, uh, this is from actually just one encounter. Uh, I think I got 3 people at level 12, uh, all in the, uh, the Brig. And uh, they, they you know, iterated for three turns, so it's 36 each. I think one of them was in there already for two turns. So I got a lot of uh, intelligence for just running one map with uh, Immortal Syndicate on. So it's almost six scarabs in between, you know, six and two scarabs uh, for running one map. And they're, uh, they're, at the moment, the Divination card scarabs are around 25C and the... Uh, the Unique scarabs around fifteen, so it's a lot of it's a lot of uh, money. Uh, you can make a lot of exalts doing this very very rapidly. Um, for it that fled and Verici, obviously it that fled, you want to be level three, so you can level up Chayula breach zones to pure Chayulas, and Verici, you want to have either level one or level three. It depends what your strategy is. If you're selling the white socket crafts on TFT, then you want them at level three. Uh, for me, I am generally just upgrading Pariah rings, the Pariah unset ring. Uh, there's a lot of magic find going on right now in the league. And that's very, very valuable to be able to turn the ring into a white socketed ring. It gives, I think, a 10% increased uh, quantity, which magic find characters really, really enjoy. Um, and so that's the goal for my, uh, my setup here on the board. Now, the reason I have two here... Uh, and the safe house. So the safe house I will never run, the uh, the mastermind mission. Um, because if this is full, if this uh, intelligence meter here is full, then when one when I imprison the uh, either the fled or Elrion as uh, when I do a safe house, then they will only be in the brig for one round, one sort of iteration, one turn. And that's really, really important for us. Uh, because that means you can go through these much, much quicker. And it also guarantees that uh, because there's only two in each of these and everybody's assigned to a house, um, if I put Elrion in the brig, then Gravitius will go straight in and one turn later, Elrion will be back out and ready to be in an intervention encounter or some other encounter. Uh, so it's very important to have the safe house at full but never run it. Um, it's uh, equally important to keep two in each of these. You can you can run with three. I've done it before. Um it can get a little messy. Uh, it's it's just simply much easier to run with two in each. And everybody else is in some other house. Uh, so we've got transportation and fortification. Uh, neither of these, uh, neither of the people here really matter at all. Uh, the order of operations is you go into any map and you uh, use your master missions to get uh, Jun. And she will spawn in every map. Guaranteed there will be an intervention, a research, and one other uh, encounter unless one of these is full and that means that you can every map you will get you know one chance to uh, upgrade whoever's at the bottom here and you'll get uh, one chance to upgrade somebody here as well 
Uh, I'm running them in Haywick Hamlet because there's a uh, a node there in Haywick Hamlet which is uh, which is intelligence. No, a test of loyalty. So immortal syndicate members executed in areas have a hundred percent chance to gain an additional rank. So that means every time I execute someone, so then they uh, they will definitely they'll go from rank one to rank three, and that's really really important because it's it basically halves the amount of time it takes to get stuff done. Um, now the lines. We should talk about the lines. Uh, an optimized, an absolutely 100% optimized board. There will be no green lines. The red lines are better. Uh, the green lines just mean that if you're in an intervention encounter and Gravicious has all these green lines, uh, that means that he could pull in uh, this guy over here, Vajan, or he could pull in Corel, um, and they would come and try and uh, help him. So they would try, you know, they would be my enemy. But if, uh, if it's a red line, then that means that they might come in and they will try and kill Gravicious instead. So they're going to be my ally. Now, the reason you want the lines and the, the method or the pattern of the lines is quite important as well. So the more lines you have, the more uh, options there are for people to bring in other people. And having uh, you want these relationships or these lines between, uh, between intervention members and between research members is fine. So it that fled and Vrici can have a line between them and they do. Uh, Elrion and it that fled can have a line between them and they do. And Verici and Gravicius can also have lines in between them. And, you know, so these four members here can have as many lines as they want between each other. When it comes to the transportation members and the fortification members, the people in uh, research can have lines to the transportation members. The people in intervention can have lines to the transportation or fortification people. But they should; these people should never have lines amongst each other. So transportation and fortification should never have lines between each other. You get these little yellow lines, which just means that they're uh, they're uh, neutral to each other. But if you're in a fortification mission, the reason for this is if you're in a fortification mission, um, and Cameria has lines to only it that fled Verici, Gravicius, or Elrion, he'll bring in these people. If, you know, the game rolls the dice, it figures out, uh, is there going to be uh, one, two, three, or four people in this encounter? Um, so Cameria is going to be the first one, and then say that there's four, uh, then it will bring in Elrion, it that fled, and Verici, or you know, any mix of these three people. But it won't bring any of these people because he doesn't have a relationship with them. So it's very, very important that you don't get relationships between transportation and fortification members. Because if you go into a map and you do your intervention, uh, you can, you're can you trying to spawn these four people as much as humanly possible. So you want, because uh, the, the the leader, so it, currently at the Fled and Elrion, uh, they don't turn up that much when it comes to a normal uh, a normal mission. So if I go into a map and there's an intervention encounter, it will always be Gravicious, and Elrion will come in once every 10 times or something, very rarely. Um, and you want these people to come in a lot because obviously it that fled, you want that to, you definitely want it that fled to be level 3 so that you can upgrade your Chiyoli Breach Stone to a pure Chiyoli Breach Stone. And it's difficult to uh, get them in. But if I'm an intervention, Gravicious definitely comes along, then it's Basically, these uh, these people are highly likely to come along because they've got relationships between themselves. These people are also highly likely to come along. But if I'm in transportation and say it's uh, Jorgen, um, Jorgen will, because we only have relationships to these four people, if Jorgen rolls the dice and he brings in three people, it's going to be, you know, one of these two leaders is definitely going to come along and you'll get the chance to execute them and uh, rank them up to level three. Uh, I'll do a video about um, basically running the safe house and then going from a you know, completely broken board or at least a, a starting board, uh, simulating a league start, and then going through, I'll just take some clips out every so often on how to uh, change the board up. But yeah, I just wanted to show you what the board looks like, uh, show you what a uh, pretty uh, efficient one looks like. I would have more, uh, like it that fled doesn't have relationships with everybody yet. Uh, Verici doesn't have relationships with everybody yet. Elrion's got a lot. Gravicious has got a lot, but there could be a lot more. Okay, so that's what the board looks like. Uh, if you have any questions, please come around to the stream and just jump in the chat and ask. I'm streaming every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and more than happy to answer anything you, you want to know about it. So with that said, please be kind to each other. Love you all very much. Um, 
and I hope to see you next time.